Hey there, Internet, and welcome to another book review. I asked the Internet, and the vote was unanimous. You all wanted me to talk about A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. I was lucky enough to get this arc from the publisher back at ALA Midwinter. I read it several months ago, and I just never got around to recording a video, so it's time to change that. If you are a lover of fantasy novels and retellings, this is the book for you. I want to go into this review with a disclaimer that I'm not going to say many specific names of things because I can't pronounce them. That's part of the fun of this book, but it also makes talking about it difficult. In this first book, in a new series by Sarah J. Moss, we have a fantastical land that has been divided. To the north you have the fairy land, to the south you have where the humans lived. It's in this human realm that readers meet Farah. She used to have a family with a very prominent life and they were well off, but then their luck changed. Her mother died. It's just her and her father and her two sisters, and she's really the one taking care of them. Necessity has determined that she become a hunter in their woods and that she scraped together a living for them. Not that her family's necessarily grateful for the work she does all the time. One cold winter's day, she's in the woods and takes down a wolf. Because of her kill, Farrah's eventually whisked off to the land of the Fae, where she's basically having to live under house arrest in Tamlin's home. Tamlin being a high lord among these creatures, higher than she realizes at first. Eventually she comes to learn about the curse that covers these lands, and how Farrah's time with Tamlin may be actually part of a much greater destiny and a much bigger problem than she ever could have realized. This book completely sucked me in in that it is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and throughout the story you can pick up on those kinds of pieces, especially from the Disney version, but at the same time it's completely Sarah J Maas's own story. She has built this land, this mythology, and her writing completely captured me. I think I maybe actually liked this book a little bit better than her Throne of Glass series just because it is told through first person. You're not bopping around in various characters' heads. You're sticking with one point of view and the way that this girl processes things that she's had to adjust her thinking in order to survive, in order to take care of everybody. It's really impressive and survivalistic and the fact that she is resisting this becoming a love story and she doesn't want it. She knows that she ought to be thinking about others, but then the p things and people or beings that she comes to care about, it all changes. Things that she thought she knew turn out to be completely untrue. People that she thought she knew are completely surprising her. This was a read that I completely devoured. I lent it to people and was surprised and yet not at all surprised to get it back within a matter of days. Like me, they inhaled it. They couldn't wait for more. This is the first book in a series, so while a lot of the loose ends are tied up at the end, this story has an independent arc, there's definitely more room to grow and I cannot wait to see what's coming next. If you like fantasy, if you like Beauty and the Beast, it's one of my favorite fairy tales, you absolutely want to pick up A Court of Thorns and Roses. And just so you know, yes, it's young adult, but it's a bit more mature young adult. A lot of uh, romance pieces going on if you're into that sort of thing, which I sure as heck was not complaining. Thank you again to the publisher for the arc. All of my usual links are down below. Comments are always welcome. And that's it for me for now. Take care. Bye.